then use uh, to pass electricity through molten zinc chloride using inert electrode in a liquid. Normally, what are the material for inert electrode? We either use uh, graphite, which is carbon, or platinum. So a silver solid was formed as a negative electrode. Why there is a silver solid? Because we are using a molten zinc chloride. Molten zinc chloride means that it does not contain any water. It contains zinc ions and it contains chloride ions. So zinc is a positive ion. It will move towards cathode. As a result, we'll see a shiny solid form because it's a metal. And chloride, chlorine is a non-metal. So chloride ions are attracted towards the anode. As a result, it will form a chlorine gas. You can use a chat or mic or screen annotation to answer. So what we call, name the process, which we call breakdown of a substance using electricity. So we call that as electrolysis. So this process is Electrolysis. A Bunsen burner was used to heat zinc chloride. Describe how a Bunsen burner is adjusted to give a hot flame. So we are using a Bunsen burner as a source of energy, but how it can provide a hot flame? Hot flame means we want a complete combustion. So if we want a complete combustion, we want excess of oxygen. So how we can have excess of oxygen? Like if, if I draw a Bunsen burner here, say this is a Bunsen burner. There is an inlet, the gas supply is there, a gas pipe inlet is there. So this is a gas pipe inlet. opening what we have we have holes or collars holes are there on the Bunsen burner so we can adjust the intensity of a flame by opening or closing these collars like the holes so if we want a hot flame it means we want a complete combustion or we want excess of oxygen to react with the car the hydrocarbon so that it can burn easily so what we should do to these holes we should open the collar holes. So answer for this question. So we should open the air holes. This is also called air holes or we can also say collar as well. Because when these air holes are closed, there will be a limited supply of oxygen. So it won't burn completely or amount of the flame or intensity will be lower. So if we open the air holes as a result, there will be a greater rate of a combustion. It increases the temperature. So answer for this one, answer for this part, increase the air holes. Yeah, increase the amount of oxygen or open, you can also say open the air holes. Because if we have more oxygen, greater amount of oxygen means greater rate of a combustion. So flame will become hot. The next one suggests and explain the expected observation at the positive electrode or anode. So at anode, we are observing a chlorine. The chloride ion will move there. We cannot see chloride ion, but when chloride ion will move there, so it will produce a chlorine gas. So what is the expected observation? What we will see if there is a chlorine gas given off? So Mr. Chlorine gas bubbles off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bubbles will be seen. But what will be the appearance of these bubbles? Chlorine is uh, yellowish green gas. So you can mention a bubbles. or uh, That will give you one mark. Or yellowish green gas is there. That is given off. So suggest and explain the expected observation. So if you write only bubble, that is acceptable. You will get the marks. If you write yellowish green gas, that is also giving the marks. But what about the second mark? The second mark is for explaining, explaining that this gas, which is given off is chlorine.
suggests why iron electrodes cannot be used in this experiment. Like we are using the inert electrode, we are either using a carbon or a graphite. But why not iron? Why iron cannot be used here for this electrolysis? As I mentioned in the beginning, inert electrodes are used, unreactive electrode. If I use iron, what Because, Mr. Uh, mm -hmm. Iron, it can react with the solution. Yeah, good. So iron is rea not inert. Iron can react. Or even if you write iron is reactive, that is also correct. So why iron is not used? Because iron is reactive metal or not inert, you can say, or iron can react with electrolyte as you mentioned. In part E1, what difference would a chemist observe at a negative electrode if aqueous zinc chloride were used rather than molten zinc chloride? Like first we are using a molten zinc chloride. If we are using a molten zinc chloride, it contains zinc ion and chloride ion. Zinc will move towards cathode and chlorine will move towards anode. But now we are using aqueous zinc chloride. Aqueous, in, Mr. So uh, H and OH. Yeah, so what what might be the difference? What is the difference in the observation? So first when we were using, yeah, H and OH is there. First when we are using a molten, the zinc metal or a solid was formed at cathode. But when we check now, when we have an aqueous zinc chloride, because hydrogen is less reactive, so now the hydrogen so will hydrogen move towards the cathode. Yeah. As so a hydrogen result, bubbles off. Yeah, the bubbles, again, you can mention bubbles, phase, effervescence. And the reason is that because hydrogen is less reactive, so it will move towards cathode. Towards so, cathode. Yeah, so bubbles will be seen. At cathode, that will be the difference instead of a solid form. And what is the reason? Because hydrogen is less reactive than uh, zinc. Less reactive than zinc. That's right. Mister, in uh, anode OH or uh, chlorine will. Uh... Yeah, in the question, because they did not mention whether it is a concentrated or a dilute. If they say concentrated, then Cl will be there. If they say dilute, then OH will be there. Yes, the main uh, Mr. Con yes. Uh, concentrated mister because uh, uh, chloride is halide. Yeah, co concentrated means like uh, less water and more salt. So less water oh, yes. and more salt, so more chloride will be there. Yes, okay, sir. Yes. The second part, when electricity is used to break down the concentrated aqueous zinc chloride, chlorine gas is produced at positive electrode. Describe a test for a chlorine. How we can test or how we can check the presence of a chlorine gas? What is the test for chlorine? If you want to test chlorine, a simple test for a chlorine, we use a damp blue litmus. And what is the observation? The litmus paper bleaches. Bleaches here means that the color of the litmus paper is removed. Or you can mention them blue litmus first turn red and then white. Or turn white. You can also write that. Uh, Mr. Y, because the chlorine is acidic? No, because what happens? See, when you have... Chlorine gas is given off and you have a damp litmus paper. Damp litmus paper yes. means it contains water. So when chlorine dissolves in water, it will form an acid, hypochlorous acid and hydrochloric ah, acid. Yes. As a result of hydrochloric acid, it first turns from blue to red. But then chlorine is having a tendency like different uh, substances have different uh, characteristics. So chlorine is having a tendency to bleach the litmus to remove the color, same like sulfur dioxide. So it will remove the color of this litmus paper. So and it will turn it to white. But first yes, white yes, turned sir. red. First white turned red because chlorine dissolved in water and formed acid. That's I why it first turned acid. Red. Yeah. The bottle zinc chloride is labeled corrosive. One safety precaution that you should take when using a zinc chloride. Like if something is labeled corrosive, 
what you should do for, uh, so mr should... uh, wear uh, safety gloves or uh, goggles yeah so you should have a goggles or a gloves because something is corrosive you should have goggles or gloves if something is toxic then in that case you should use a fume cupboard fume cupboard allow the uh, poisonous vapors or toxic gases to escape from the chamber or mr it can be uh, wear a mask yes in that case toxic you can mention that yes okay miss okay the next one a student investigated the reaction between two different solutions a and b of aqueous potassium manganate with solution c so solution a and b is potassium manganate and solution c is something else three experiments were done experiment 1 a burette was filled with solution a the initial burette reading was recorded the measuring cylinder was used to pour 25 cm cube of solution to see into a conical flask so what we did we filled the burette with solution a first and in the conical flask we took solution c then a solution a was added into a conical flask so the solution a is added into a conical flask the final burette reading was recorded about 2 cm cube of a content of the conical flask was poured into a test tube in experiment 3 the rest of the content in the conical flask was poured away the conical flask was rinsed with distilled water so what we did we took about 2 cm cube from this sample and we transferred that into a test tube and we used this for experiment 3 so use the screen annotation to complete the initial burette reading and the final burette reading and the volume use is a difference so what is the initial burette reading this value we always use the lower meniscus or the bottom of the meniscus for experiment 1 what is the initial burette reading use the screen annotation to complete this so whenever we read the burette we read from the top because in a burette the volume of a liquid it's not like how much volume is there the burette reading is how much volume is removed so whenever you are reading a burette it's always how much volume is removed so final burette reading is 16.1 and what about initial burette reading how much volume is was removed initially that is 1.1 good and what about the difference in the volume difference in the volume or the volume used so that is equals to 15 look whenever you are writing answer because the first value you was having one decimal place the second value also one decimal place so the third value also one decimal place so you, instead of writing only 15 write 15.0 because your all the answers are in one decimal place the first answer was 16.1 the second is 1.1 so third answer should also be precise to one decimal place that's why instead of writing only 15 write 15.0 so in the first experiment we are using 15.0 then in second experiment the content of the burette is used in experiment 1 was poured away and the burette was rinsed with distilled water and the burette was rinsed with solution b So first, now we use the same burette. First, we rinse with the distilled water. Why we rinse with the distilled water to remove any uh, sample A solution A was left. That's why we first remove with distilled water. Then why we rinse with solution B to remove any water? Like this burette initially was filled with. So this burette was there, and this was initially filled with. solution a then we remove all solution a and we rinse with water distilled water when we rinse with water so all of the solution a will be removed if any trace of solution a then after rinsing with water some maybe some water droplets are there so what we do we rinse with solution b so that to remove any water present in the mixture then experiment 1 was repeated using a solution b instead of solution a the volume of a burette reading 
complete use screen annotation to complete how much volume of the solution is removed from the burette, the initial and the final, and the volume used. So the first that is 1.90 whenever you are writing whenever you are writing uh, for the burette it is only one decimal place so you don't have to mention this zero here because it is accurate to one decimal place so 31.9 1.9 when you take difference 30.0 is a correct answer so when we compare the two solutions for like example, when we compare the two reactions, we have a burette. We fill the burette with solution A first, and we use a conical flask. And in the conical flask, we took solution C. And how much was solution C? 25 TMU. Yeah, here why three three parts are there and two marks? If you make any one mistake, you will lose one mark. If all three correct, you will get two marks. So in IGCSE, there is no half mark. Like for example, if one of the reading is wrong, if one of the reading is wrong, you will lose one mark. If two readings are wrong, you will lose both of the marks. And all three are correct, you will get scored both, uh, all two marks for this. So, first, when we are using A, how much we use? We use 15.0 C and Q for a complete reaction with C. Then we repeat the experiment. We take the same amount of C, we took 25 cm cube of C here in the first experiment, and we took 25 cm cube of C in the second experiment. But in the second experiment, we use solution B. And how much solution B is needed for a complete reaction? For a complete reaction with C, we need 30 cm cube of solution B. So which solution is more concentrated, A or B? Which solution is having a high concentration or more particles in a small space? So. When you compare the concentration, because a small amount of A can completely react it with C, but we need a greater volume of a B to react with C. So which solution is more concentrated? Solution A is more concentrated and solution B is less concentrated because the concentration is moles divided by volume. So the solution which we need a small quantity it means that is having a high concentration. For a solution in which we need more volume, that is having a low concentration. So you can also work out the concentration of the solutions, compare the concentration by comparing the volume used for a reaction. If small quantity is used, it means high concentration, low quantity is used for a complete reaction. Uh, if high, uh, greater volume is used, it means it is having a low concentration. Then the same question, which solution of a potassium manganate solution A or B is more concentrated? Just now I answered this, that which solution is more concentrated A or B? So the correct answer is solution A. And what is the reason for that? Because we need a smaller volume of a, a for a complete reaction. So answer, which solution is more concentrated? The answer is solution A. And the reason is that because we need a smaller quantity or less volume is needed for complete reaction with twenty five cm cube solution C. So when we take twenty five cm cube of solution C, we only need fifteen cm cube of A, whereas for solution B, we need 30 cm cube of solution B. 
how many times more concentrated is the solution in of potassium manganate so when we compare the concentration what is the relation between a concentration and volume they are inverse so solution a for a complete reaction we use 15 cm cube of solution a solution b yeah that's right the solution b is 30 cm cube so what when we compare the concentration because concentration and volume are inversely proportional so if the volume is half then it means the concentration is double so how many times it is uh, more concentrated so it is twice or solution a is two times more concentrated than solution b predict the volume of the solution b that would be used if experiment 2 was repeated using 50 cm cube this is simply based on the ratio like example we have a conical flask and the burette in the conical flask we in the experiment 2 in conical uh, we took 25 cm cube of solution c and from the burette how much b was used we used 30.0 cm cube of solution b so now what they are saying they are saying if we repeat the same procedure same experiment with 50 cm cube of solution c first we took 25 cm cube of solution c now we are taking 50 cm cube of solution c and we so how much the question is how much b is needed for a reaction so if 25 cm cube if 25 cm cube of c required 50 cm 30 cm cube so what is the relation between reaction of b and c so if we have 25 cm cube of c we need 30 cm cube of b but if we have 50 cm cube of c how much b is needed at cross multiply so when we cross multiply it will be 30 into 50 divided by 25 so how much x is there the x will be 60 cm cube so how much b is needed we need 60 cm cube of b for a complete reaction so now but the problem what is the problem here if we need 60 cm cube of solution b the burette maximum can hold 50 cm cube the amount of the liquid which a burette can hold the maximum is 50 cm cube so how we remove a 60 cm cube out from a burette so we have to refill the burette so this is just a practical reason a practical problem when we use a 50 cm cube of solution c that could cause and how this problem can be solved so what is the practical problem if we use 50 cm cube of solution c we need 60 cm cube of solution b so we have to refill the burette so the practical problem that volume of solution b required is 60 cm cube but the burette can hold only 50 cm cube so what we have to do we have to refill the burette so because solution b if we need more than 50 then we have to refill the burette that is always a practical problem related to if you need a greater amount of liquid from more than 50 cm cube of liquid from the burette you should always refill the burette then give one advantage and one disadvantage of using a measuring cylinder rather than a pipette what is the advantage of using a measuring cylinder we can transfer the mixture or the solution quickly but what is the disadvantage it is not accurate so that is the main disadvantage of using a aging cylinder like volume won't be accurate it will be approximate volume experiment 3 the results of experiment 3 were shown when we add sodium hydroxide about 2 cm cube a green precipitate form 
An aqueous sodium hydroxide was added to a reaction mixture in experiment one. Red brown precipitate are formed. What conclusion you, you can draw about solution C? So what we did, aqueous sodium hydroxide was added to two cn cube of solution C. First, we observe a green precipitate. But when we add aqueous sodium hydroxide to a reaction in experiment one, we are getting a red brown precipitate. So what this gives an idea, this gives an idea that when, whenever you are adding sodium hydroxide and green precipitate form, this gives an idea that either chromium will be there or iron 2 will be there because iron 2 is dirty green. Now this gives an idea iron is there, iron 2. And when red brown precipitate are there, it gives an idea that iron 3 is there. So basically what happened so first solution C was iron 2. So solution C contained iron 2. Which oxidized to oxidized means increase in oxidation number or addition of oxygen. So which oxidized to iron. Three. So initially in solution, it was iron two, but when we are using, like example, maybe due to the surrounding oxygen or due to surrounding reactants, it might be oxidized to iron three. So this was related to identification of the ions. In question three, two substances, solution D and solid E were analyzed. Solution D was a sulfuric acid. Test on solution D. Solution D was divided to four equal portion. pH of the first portion. D is a sulfuric acid. What will be the observation if we have sulfuric acid? The pH, pH of sulfuric acid. So because sulfuric acid is a strong acid, so what will be the pH? The pH will be equal to one, or you can also write two. The strip of a magnesium was added. The gas produced was tested. Look, whenever acid, because this is acid, sulfuric acid, acid react with metal. What is the product? It will be a salt and hydrogen. So what is the observation? We'll observe fizz, bubbles, effervescence. And the gas, the hydrogen gas is there. So how we can test the hydrogen gas? To so test with lighted splint. And it will pop. So why it is of three marks? One mark is for mentioning bubbles, phase, effervescence. One mark is for mentioning the test for hydrogen and one mark is for mentioning the observation for this test. Dilute nitric acid and silver, aqueous silver nitrate was added. Dilute nitric acid and silver nitrate, this is what, this is a test for halidine. This is a test which is used to check the presence of chloride, bromide and iodide. But because solution D, solution D contains sulfuric acid, it contains hydrogen ion and sulfate ion. So what will be the observation here? No change, no visible change or no reaction. Now dilute nitric acid followed by barium nitrate. What is this test for? This is a test for sulfate ion. So because sulfuric acid is there, which contain hydrogen ion and sulfate ion, so whenever sulfate ion is there, barium reacts with sulfate. As a result, it will ob we'll observe a white precipitate. So white PPT is observed due to the formation of barium sulfate. Test on solid E. So we are now analyzing solid E. So the appearance of a solid is a white solid. So whenever a sol it's a white solid, this gives an idea that it does not contain any transition element. Because transition element, their compounds are colored, so no transition element is there. It either it will be group one, two, or three. Solid E was heated gently and though then strongly. A white solid residue is there. A distilled water was added to a residue. The pH of a mixture is 10. So what this gives an idea, this gives an idea that it is basically 
an alkaline solution or it might contain hydroxide then acid is added dilute hydrochloric acid is added rapid effervescence and a lime water turned milky so this gives an idea because this is a test for a carbonate whenever we add acid the carbonate react with acid gives carbon dioxide which will turn lime water milky so this gives an idea that this salt is a carbonate salt it also making a solution alkaline hydroxide is there but also gives an idea it is carbonate salts because with a acid it is giving a carbon dioxide which is turning a lime water milky then excess of sodium aqueous sodium hydroxide was added white precipitate which is insoluble so if you have a white precipitate and these white precipitate does not dissolve so this gives an idea this is calcium because aluminum zinc and lead it also give white precipitate but these white precipitate dissolve so adding a sodium hydroxide white precipitate insoluble so it gives idea that it is a calcium ion so what is compound e so we conclude that compound e is actually calcium carbonate so identify the gas which is produced in test 2 so which gas is produced in test 2 when we add acid we and the gas turned lime water milky so the gas is carbon dioxide in good conclusion you draw about solid e so what we can say about solid e what is solid e so we can say because it contain a calcium ion it contain carbonate ion so you can say it is calcium carbonate so one mark is for mentioning calcium one mark is for mentioning carbonate so it is or contain calcium ion contain carbonate ion or you can directly write the name of a compound calcium carbonate that will score two marks